Hello, my Soccer Universe 2. My take on this whole Super League thing uh, that has been swirling around that I see everyone writing, posting, whatever about it. And I have been quiet, namely because, uh, yeah, there's work to do. So I'm doing this now on my lunch break. And B, I always wanted to see kind of if there's more happening, if we get to know more and a little bit more of reaction because, you know, I could make the ah, video, yeah, they're doing it, they're doing it, it's the end of soccer. And football, uh, you know, I made a video why I call it soccer and uh, football interchangeably, both are valid terms and, uh, you know, in terms of ambigu ambiguity, I think soccer, it's pretty clear which sport I mean. Uh, should also be clear from the jer jerseys I'm wearing. So yeah, uh, I warn you right now, my take is not as dark, sinister or whatever, although my gut feeling is that this is uh, potentially a seismic moment. However, I say hold your horses so far. Everything has to play out. Uh, I heard today in the podcast there will be lawyers. I'm sure there will be. And, you know, we also have, to, we, as always, we have to look at both sides of the argument. This is what I'm... Am I, and right off the bat, am I in favor of having such a close Super League? Of course I'm not. Of course, not, especially the way it is proposed now here, and I have uh, the 12 teams that have been confirming that they're in there. I have some serious trouble with a few of the included teams here. Uh, and yes, my favorite international team is in there. Um, so let's start out. We have 12 teams, six from England, three from Spain and three from Italy, confirming that they will uh, be forming a Super League to start already uh, this August as a direct competition to the Champions League. Uh, so midweek fixtures and it will be the Super League that is, uh, uh, is played there. Um, they want to in, uh, they say three teams from Germany and um, France will join. You can take a wild guess who those teams will be, more on that as well. Um, and then they want to invite five more teams. So two groups of ten. Uh, the format I hear so they, they then play uh, the groups uh, group stage, uh, the two groups of ten. Uh, the top three go directly into the quarterfinal. Then there will be a playoff between the fourth and fifth place team for the final quarterfinal spots, da 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 da, final single leg, and so on and so on. Direct competition to the Champions League. Of course, we have the very, very great name Super League. Give me a break. <laughs> it's just marketing genius out there. We have been calling it Super League, yeah, blah, 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 blah. Uh, how will you call the final? Super final. I have an uh, idea for call it Super Bowl. That has not been used out there. So right off the bat to me, yeah. Uh, it is pretty clear what the intentions are. The intentions are more money because the clubs and I, we could run through all of them. They see that there is a whole lot of money f more for them in there uh then there is if it's all central marketed via uefa and i uh, it has i honestly uh think there is truth to that that and and it comes especially because most of these teams have big ownership uh that especially look at the american market and especially the nfl and the nba but i think more the nfl in this case where you have a closed league, you can market these teams, this is steadily there, you have a steady income, and uh, this is exploding. Whereas uh, in the European system, the uh, time on the we have this meritocracy, uh, where it's not guaranteed that every year you, you play in there. The Champions League initially was the way we have the group stage, this goes back, and you know, I will exonerate Milan from the whole thing a teeny, teeny bit. But the whole thing started with Berlusconi at Milan. He wanted to have the group stage. He wanted to have the more secure income. He didn't like that when uh, Inter were champions in 89, they played then in the, Euro, the European Cup, they were in the first round eliminated. So that's why we had the group stage. When we had extended that also the second place teams can enter because there was we had a wonderful competition in the UEFA Cup. 
however, everyone then was going for the Champions League because there was more money. So uh, it all expanded because the big teams wanted to have a more secure income. And the big teams also had the, uh, the trouble is that the Premier League uh, generated them so much more money that the others needed to follow up. And so that we kind of, all, it's always a catch up game. There is potentially more money to be made if you have uh, the big teams playing each other. Uh, and I would agree with that. However, you cannot have, not in this environment, you cannot have a closed system. Uh, it just does not work. I mean, the way they say, okay, and we'll invite five others who would who are worth you, blah blah blah. Uh, give me an effing break. So yeah, uh, that's that's for me the first thought. And I, from a certain perspective, I do understand. I mean, if this what is it, three hundred twenty billion uh, is to be made right right there, which is money that those teams will never get if they would stay within UEFA. Now, uh, is it right to do? No, pro definitely not. But, you know, uh, I don't want to be not immoral because this is the way the world runs. The rich are going to get richer and there needs to be government that actually uh, proposes that everything is a little bit more spread equally. So, and given the ownership of most of these clubs, I mean, they are already super billionaires. All they see is money. I mean, I'm wearing Manchester United on purpose because to me, uh, the Super League kind of got when the Glazers got involved, you know, American own ownership. They just used this as a cash cow and, you know, stole away debt and so on. Uh, it's pretty clear that it comes from, from them. To me, the three main culprits behind this are those three up here. Uh, United, uh, Juve and Real Madrid. Real Madrid, of course, will always be there. Juventus, I mean, Agnelli hasn't been making noise like that as crazy. And I'm sure that the Glazers have been talking about it. Um, I also think, you know, the Manchester cities in there are not uh, definitely, they're all very willing to uh, go, go along. I mean, I just look at Barcelona. Yes, if Real Madrid joins, uh, yeah, we need Barcelona to join as well. And Barcelona has such a heap of depth now, of course. Uh, and similarly goes, uh, for instance, for your Arsenal, uh, who will not qualify for the Champions League. And one of the, uh, Liverpool and Chelsea also will not. Spurs, for sure not. Milan may qualify, but Milan and Inter, uh, and that's the little exoneration. Why are they pulling along with this? Yeah, well, you don't, hey, you don't want to miss out if Juventus goes in. I mean, this, this I think, is one big point. Are you gonna, if there's really a the revolution, do you want to miss out on that? Hmm, rather not, or? So they, then uh, B, both Milan clubs had, had were terribly run, accrued a lot of debt. Now they're under new ownership who want to clear up house, but are still with the heavy baggage of financial fair play hanging over them that they just can't, they, it's, a major operation to claw themselves back to the glory where they're in their right feeling and probably in many f uh, general fans feeling they rightfully belong among the top three in Italy and the top three up there but you know meritocracy there is a reason for this to be there so yeah a lot of money to to be made and this is the main driver and this was also the main driver behind the Champions League reform and is also yeah hit behind every single reform. Now, uh, the timing of the announcement, very curious because UEFA was about to announce the new Champions League, which is a ridiculous system. But again, it would guarantee more games, however, not to the uh, like it because we have six teams from England. And yeah, um, I should go into uh, my biggest problem with the whole, whole thing. <laughs> and it's actually the teams that are in there. I'm all right with Juventus, Manchester United, Real Madrid, Barcelona, Liverpool, Inter, Milan, and then maybe take take a pick. I would say uh, Chelsea probably would deserve some win there. But a Super League where the top teams of uh, European history or whatever in there. This does not include Atletico Madrid, this does not include Arsenal, and this for sure does not include Spurs. For me, Spurs is the one thing, the one club that really sticks out like a sore thumb to me. Yes, they're the first English team that won Euro European trophies. They have no history whatsoever in the Champions League. Yes, they made it to one measly final on a very lucky night in Amsterdam. 
Arsenal similarly. Yes, Arsenal has had a good run in the Champions League and probably should have reached more than one final. But they made only one final. And they lost that one. At least Chelsea on the recent has, yes, with uh, lots of ownership, uh, got in there. Manchester City, I have even... Yeah, is for me a border, I guess. European, in, on European level, they are nobody. However, at least they are accruing up championships, which those two, Spurs and Arsenal, there is not even a trophy there. You're not a top club. This to me is the same thing when they founded this first year, uh, the top uh, the top clubs of, of Europe, and suddenly Leverkusen was in there for Germany. Leverkusen? Who the F are you? That always irked me, and then they got the ECA, and it's, it's, it's a whole, whole, whole lot of trouble. So yeah, uh, this is for me. <laughs> Uh, the teams, either it's just preposterous, and that, that the imbalance, six English teams and, th uh, and six uh, Italian-Spanish teams, that is also uh, just does not look right. I understand it, that as an entity, the six English teams, of course, they are the money makers. These are the biggest teams at the moment. I do understand that. But from a historical perspective, it's ridiculous to the core. Absolutely. The only thing that keeps Arsenal and Spurs in there is because they're London-based. And that's then the other thing. If you make a Super League, yes, you have, we have the teams, but uh, how about spread? We have three teams from London, we have two teams from Milan, we have two teams from Madrid. I think the what's so successful about the NFL and, and so on is that there is quite some protection about the markets. Yes, we have two teams in New York in the NFL, um, but everything is rather spread out and they're very careful of adding add, add, add teams. I think if you would make a proper Super League, it has, there have to be, it would be ideal to have from every country, maybe uh, at least one team or something like that. There needs to be an Ajax in there. That's for me the first and foremost name that's missing and I'm, uh, Ajax goes for me ahead of Bayern. Maybe foolishly so. Bayern is, pro is probably the bigger club. So Bayern, uh, probably, the, and then Ajax. This, this is a team that should Benfica. I'm just throwing out, 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 out names. Well, 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 Eastern clubs. Why Russian clubs? Hmm? I mean, just... It's so limited and closed in a way that just uh, bugs me to the core and I know they can do it with the invitation but yeah give, give me a break now um, the other big thing that I want to add is of course that there are no teams from Germany or France that have uh, announced made an announcement there um, yeah the German teams are so afraid of making this announcement because they are fan run and their fan base is already running riot and uh, the Dortmund CEO Watzke uh, was even heard saying that, yeah, he supports the Champions League reform because it will prevent the Super League. He knows that in Dortmund you cannot openly come out with this, this announcement. This is the death of them as executives in many ways there. And uh, the backlash all over Europe is so humongously big that I actually have my own doubts that uh, this will actually go through. Now, uh, speaking of backlash, UEFA, of course, uh, made crisis meeting FIFA, blah, blah, blah. the players that are uh, to be playing now for these clubs will be barred from taking part in European Championships and World Cups, or, you know, they are so basically barred from nas national teams, which I'm not sure is that big of a threat. Yes, for a player may be, but honestly, you can make a whole lot more money and you give up the teeny bit of World Cup glory and national teams have anyway been this sore spot for these big teams. So I'm not sure if that's the big threat. I think a slightly bigger but not great threat either is that those teams are about to be expelled from the Premier League, from La Liga and from Serie A. Yeah, thank you very much, they will say, because that is what we want to have along the way anyway. I think if they are serious, this could go a long way in really dividing things up quite nicely. Check out Betis Sevilla has already reacted by publishing a table in which they are third take, take, taken out the top three. Found this a great re re response. I think they were not smart, smart enough to take out the games against the big three, but that would be even cooler. Uh, just to, as, as a response to that one. Um, yeah. It is what it is. 
I have a gut feeling that this is still a big negotiating thing that you want to take over. The clubs don't like that the Champions League is centrally marketed by UEFA. They want to have control over that. So I still think we are not done yet with this. Uh, I think it's not a final, but you know, this is probably the closest we've ever come to see this from this happening. Uh, it might be really a, may, it could be a major shift or it's just a big bluff. That remains to be seen. Um, the big question is, will I watch it? Will I cover it? I cannot say for now. My favorite, one of my two favorite teams is India, Milan. So of course I will probably be interested in it. Maybe the interest will not be as big, but you know, there's a whole lot of stuff in there. Do I need to see uh, the big teams play only amongst each other? No. Um, but I also think it's a weakness of the Champions League that the um, difference in quality between the big clubs and the small clubs became so big that the group stage is near unwatchable. I will agree to that. But I think they're the solution. But this is never gonna have fruition, but I think they're the solution is what they are pr pr proposing in the Netherlands. And I was about to make a video about it, but I never really got to it. You know, Netherlands and the Belgian league, they want to fuse and make a uh, top division there. I think there uh, would be, arg ar ar arguably take league on with that one too. Then you have one big ent 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 entity that, that, that could compete, could do the same thing as, as Scandinavia. I was actually thinking, where will Austria join? Uh, talks with Switzerland have been happening. I don't see it quite have happening because EU, uh, Swiss, 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 and all that's complicated. So ac actually, also should go to the historically roots so and maybe join up with the Czech, Slovaks, Hungarians. Oh, this is a league that was politically very, very uh, hot. So, you know, I would go along these lines. I am not, uh, I don't want to go much further because there should then be a Balkan league and that is going to be a whole lot of chaos. Uh, but, you know, just a little bit of concentrated sharing of powers to make leagues that overall uh, where smaller countries join together to make a bigger league and maybe from that you can get your European spots because of course the financial muscle is, 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 isn't, isn't there. Uh, but maybe I, I will do this video. Uh, but the only countries where I see that this could work relatively easy is, as I said, Belgium, the Netherlands and potentially add France in there. Um, I even could see potentially Denmark joining, but I think Denmark, Sweden, Finland, Norway not because EU. So uh, that could be another entity um, where, you know, the um, economics work out. But yeah, this is the one calm way to come 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 a little bit of this the, the disparity in these leagues. But um, the Super League is not the solution. The Super League will make the problem worse. Uh, the only thing that I have to say that I see as, as a positive is that those clubs, how as sinister and as cynical as they are, they're actually going very much against those old structures of FIFA and UEFA with this top-down structure, which I think is outdated as well. Uh, especially FIFA, I, there have been many calls, you know, on, on the plot, and I, th I still think that FIFA needs to be built up in a completely different way. And I think now in Europe we see that this goes maybe, uh, that even with UEFA, things are not quite right. Uh, is it fair? No. Is it democratic? No. But I think a change needs to happen. But it, you cannot always appease the others. And, you know, um, Many fans say throw out the big guys, yeah, but that's ex exactly what they want. So, uh, and the product will not be better. Now, I also support a team, a small team. That's my main. Uh, I would still say it's my main, main team. Where I think the thrill is to see this team going from an amateur level now to the top of the Austrian league and into Europe, making even to the round of sixteen uh, last year. That thrill is gone with that. And this is where it hurts a little bit, that you know, you don't have this anymore. And this up and down. As I said, I don't think we have heard the last of it. I don't think this is done, everything. Um, we just have to see.
I, I say wait and see. Uh, I would not go all crazy on it that this is the end of whatever. Not yet. Uh, and I never say it's the end of it. It's maybe the end of the football we know, but you know this was already with Bosman. It was the end of the football we knew back then. There's always renewing stuff. So uh, we need to see that. And yes, I mourn still for the old UEFA Cup. It was a great competition. Uh, but that was the end of it in, in the 90s. So uh, it is always evolution. This might be the next one of it. I'm reminded of the Millionaires League in Colombia in the 50s, Alfredo Di Stefano, uh, which was also banned from FIFA and then folded after, I think, three years of cashing out, a, uh, dishing out a lot of money. Will we see some, something like that happening? Uh, it will be weird times coming up. I can tell you that if we really have this breakaway league, there will be a period where those two are separate. And then they will come and find that they need each other and they will come together again. If it really happens. I actually think that in the end, cooler head prevails, although I think the relationship with, within the governing bodies and the uh, leadership of the clubs is hugely fractured, especially when I look at this Agnelli guy. Yeah, <laughs> I have so much to say, but you know, I, you get most of my thoughts right here. Let me know your thoughts. I know they will be all negative on this Super League. Um, I'm not very positive about it, but at least I want to keep somewhat an open mind to it and look a little bit deeper because, I mean, the, of course, the first reaction is, Bleh. We don't need this. <sighs> Just keep your mind a little, a little bit open and see what might, uh, what might be happening. Whether it's just a big marketing, uh, um, a big bargaining chip or whatever, whatever you know, a threat, the last threat that is possible. All these kind, 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 kind of things. Um, the world is cynical. That you have to realize. No one cares that much about the romanticism of uh, that we had, for instance, in the 80s, and even then, probably people where an IFK Gothenburg could win the UEFA Cup twice. Just... Your thoughts below that, give me a thumbs up, if you enjoyed this video, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more, and I will talk to you soon. Bye! Hey there! I really hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and clicking the little bell icon so that you get, I get updated whenever something is happening in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day!